Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'll be showing you how to get Dark Dagger in Blocks Fruits. That's right, this really tiny little knife right here. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It's free to do so and really helps me out. Also, I've recently made a new website, so it will be the first link in the description below if you want to go check that out. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The first thing you'll need is to be at least level 1500 so you can enter the third sea. I'm in the third sea right now at the sea castle area. As you can see, it's a giant castle on the sea. Next, you are going to want to get the God's Chalice. To get the God's Chalice, you need to come over to this guy, the Elite Hunter. Talk to them. AAA, looking for any difficult tasks, you press yes. Oh, they don't have anything for me right now. Well, every 10 minutes, an elite NPC or an elite pirate will spawn somewhere around the map. This elite hunter will tell you where one is if they have spawned. If not, it will say they don't have any tasks for you right now. There are three elite hunters, one with ma awakened magma fruit, one with awakened dark fruit, and one with awakened rumble fruit. The elite enemies have a 2.5% chance to drop the god's chalice. It is pretty hard to get. Just note that you don't have to take the quest from the elite hunter, it's just there so you know where the enemies are. There are two other methods of getting the chalice. One is from chests. Every four hours, a chalice spawns in a random chest throughout the entire map. So you're gonna have to wait in from the server start until four hours until it goes in a random chest all over the third sea. So you're going to have to search almost every chest if you're gonna want to find the chalice that way. Another method is to go to the haunted castle, which is that direction, and go to the graveyard and praying on the graveyard NPC, the tombstone thing, and it has a very small chance of getting you a chalice as well. I'll quickly show you some elite pirate spawns. First, in Turtle Island, which is the biggest island in the Third Sea, I believe. So, first of all, you go through the mansion, come out, and over right there, right over here, is where the first spawn is that I'm showing you. The second spawn from this first spawn is right roughly behind the where the musketeer pirates spawn. So roughly over there. The third spawn is near the jungle pirates. You come through the back and a spawn's right there. As you can see right on this hill. The next one is you come around here and it that spawns roughly over here on these rocks. The next spawn after that is all the way up there. Oh, and there we go. There is one of the NPCs right in the spawn that I was going to show you. So I'll quickly kill it and hope you'll get the God's Chalice. Some more spots that the elite pirates can spawn is right behind here, which is still on Turtle Island. Over he here, as you can see, behind the mansion-ish area over that way. I think that's pretty much it for Turtle Island. Next is Hydra. The first spawn for Hydra Island is right over here in between the two giant islanders. The next one after that is right over there uh, near the arena in that portion. Then the next spawn after that is somewhere in that direction, I believe. I don't entirely know where. It's just, you just follow the outer rim with observation hockey and hopefully you'll find him. Some rare spots for a elite captain to spawn are the great tree where he just spawns on that little side right over there and 
the starter island, the ports island. For the port island, there's a, the three main big rocks, and the middle one at the far back, he spawns to the right of it. It's one of the two main parts at the side of the island, like this right here, and that over there. There we go. And I got it first try, let's go. I got the God's Chalice first try, that's pretty crazy. So this is what the God's Chalice looks like. Looks like a golden cup with some wine or hot chocolate in it, I don't know. Something like that. Now, you do not want to die with the God's Chalice. If you die, you do not keep it. Now that you have the God's Chalice, go back to Sea Castle. And before you spawn Rip Indra, a secret raid boss, you're gonna have to complete a puzzle. Well, it's not really a puzzle, but that's what they call it anyway. So you're going to want to light up three different buttons around Sea Castle. There's one over here behind this big pillar thing, tower, right there. As you can see, it's white. The next one's over here near these giant squares. This one's red. And the final one is all the way at the top. Right here. And this is pink. Now, if you haven't noticed what my Haki color is, well, this is Winter Sky Haki. It's one of the three legendary Haki colors. And as you can see, when I step on the Winter Sky button, it lights up green. That one is completed. Either you or someone else or any other person in the server has to light up the buttons. That can be you, that can be your friend, that can be a random person. As long as uh, all the buttons are lit up, you can summon Rip Indra. Now, you do not need all three legendary Haki colors. You can have all three. You can have two, you can have one. You don't even have to have one. As long as there are other people that can uh, make the buttons green. So as you can see, I made the pink button green. Next, I'm going to change my Haki color. My Haki color is now Snow White. Bam. Now I'm going to the white button that is leading Snow White. I'm here, I step on it, and there we go. That button's lit up. Now all that's left is pure red Haki button. And there we go, that's the final button. Now that all the three buttons are activated, you need to come to this big middle part of the sea castle into the throne room. Now over here, there is a pad, as you can see, and that's where you want to place the God's Chalice. And to place a God's Chalice in the pad, you're going to want to hold it out and walk up to the pad just like that. Oh, oh no, I spawned him. All right, there's Rip Indra. Level five, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Level 5,000. That's Rip Indra. He's a level 5,000 boss. He uses Dark Blade version two, and you've got a very limited amount of time to kill him. So, I recommend using, uh, or having, lots of friends or other people in the server to help him kill or help you kill him but if you do not kill him within the time I think it's like 15 minutes then he despawns you can die if you die uh, I don't think he respawns he generates health but he attacks constantly, and it's really annoying. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble killing him by myself. Now, as you can just see, 
as I got him almost to die, he has a second phase. Now this is very hard because not only does he um, use the Arc of Dark Wave, he does that, which is like a shockwave move. It's an admin ability and it does a lot of damage and it's very hard to dodge. Okay. Quite a good amount of damage. And he can do it whenever he wants, it's just random. So just hope he doesn't do it too often. I, I died from a rip injury. Anyway, let's continue. Oh, dang it. As you can see, Rip Indra just despawned on me. It looks like it's 15 minutes that you have to kill Rip Indra. When you kill Rip Indra, you have a basically 100% chance of getting the Valkyrie helmet, which is a pretty good hat, but I don't like it to be honest. And a roughly 2 to 5% chance of getting Dark Dagger. Dun dun dun. Rip Indra also gives three levels when killed and a lot of money. I don't exactly know how much, but it's like several hundred thousand or something like that. And also 1,500 fragments. So it's pretty useful to kill for almost everyone, but I just missed out because I was doing it on my own. I almost killed him though. Now Dark Dagger, a quick showcase of Dark Dagger is Proficient Impale, where you go lunge forward, stabbing your knife into somebody. And Shaming Slash, you throw your dagger, if it hits anything or anyone, you teleport to them, teleport behind them, and well, slash them. The Proficient Impale is pretty good for mobility, as you can see it got me like that far off the ground. And they are very good for combos. As you can see, the shaming slash, bam, right like that, where you can go straight into impale. When using it like that, you can also use it very well with superhuman. Let me show you the shaming slash proficient impale and beast alpha. If you use it fast enough, you can uh, get your beast owl pounce off the enemy but the enemy stone the boss got flung too far so the cancelled and that time I just wasn't fast enough he dark dagger pairs very well with superhuman and also with kabucha since they're all linear If you enjoyed or found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get notified when I make a new video. Thanks for watching, and see you all next time.